With the release of Frigate 0.14, I figured it was time to revisit my automations that create alerts on my phone. So in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about blueprints, and we're gonna talk about the Frigate blueprint in particular, and go over all the details of that. So let's get started. So for those of you not familiar with Frigate, Frigate is an NVR. It's built around real-time AI object detection. All processing is performed locally on your own hardware and your camera feeds never leave your home. So there's no subscription-based anything. Now you can do a subscription to Frigate Plus and it gives you a few extra features, but that is not required in order to use Frigate. So in order to get alerts on my phone, what I've done is I've used a blueprint. And a blueprint in, in Home Assistant are pre-made automations that you can add to Home Assistant instance. You can reuse the blueprint over and over again. So in my case, I've got five cameras. I'm gonna use the same blueprint on all five cameras, meaning I will have five automations built off of a single blueprint. Blueprints are made by the Home Assistant community. And you can click on this link here from the Blueprints page. And this is the Blueprints Exchange. All of these listed in here are blueprints that have been submitted by the community along with conversations and discussions about the blueprints. So you can get some feedback, provide uh, support or get support for the blueprint from the blueprint authors in here. The one we're gonna be most concerned with today is the Frigate mobile app notifications. And that's this blueprint right here. There was a uh, original blueprint that was made by Hunter JM and back in 2022, there was a release that caused issues with it. Now, I had an issue with my original blueprints that I was using. I never got them to work exactly right. And so I, I rolled my own uh, notifications on Home Assistant with very few features. Now, this new blueprint that I'm going to talk about today has a ton of features already built in. Uh, and you can configure it just exactly the way you need to use it. This, uh, this person, Hunter JM, hadn't done anything in a long time. And so Sergeant Batten, who is the author of this particular blueprint, uh, updated it and added dozens of new features. Um, he's continued to do so, and the mods have split the thread here to make things simpler. So you can go to the GitHub page, which is this right here, for all of the information on it. You can also read this post right here. There is a stable and a beta version. I'm going to be talking about the stable version today. Now, there are two ways to add the blueprint. You can click on this right here, import blueprint to my, and um, I'm going to open this in a new tab just to show you. It's going to open this page right here that says uh, open your page in Home Assistant. This is the URL that it will open. If this is not correct, you can edit this and put the proper URL in. I had an issue doing that. I'm not sure why it, it gave me an error. Uh, for that. So if I open this link here, you'll see an unknown error occurred. If that happens, no big deal. You can actually go over here to the GitHub page uh, and you can copy the uh, URL from there and paste it in. I'm going to do that in my other Home Assistant instance here. So I'm going to go to uh, Blueprints here. I'm going to import the blueprint, a blueprint, and I'm gonna paste in the address of this. And actually I need to get the right address. What, I, what you need to do when you uh, paste a blueprint in, if I can find it here, is you either want beta or stable. I'm gonna click on stable. The link for this is the link you want and it's in the URL. I know you can't see it on this screen, but it's the URL in the browser. And you wanna take and put that into the blueprint address and then preview it. And if it pops up like this, you'll see all this information here. That means that it actually pulled the right URL and everything is, and you can check the version here. This is 12.0.4a, import to blueprint. And now you have this uh, blueprint that's uh, able to be used. I wanna show you the actual blueprint that this creates. And the reason I wanna show you the, is because I wanna show you how a blueprint can save you a ton of time. Uh, so this is the actual code for that blueprint. And you can see just how much stuff is in here. A lot of this is, is the input fields that you use in a template in order to uh, have selections available to the person building the automation with the template. And then you have all of the action items that go on way below. But you can definitely see that if you were to write this, it would take you a very long time. 
So the benefit you get from using blueprints is that the community has spent a ton of time building out things for you to use in your automation. So you don't have to do the work. And that's the beauty of blueprints. Just use a blueprint for what you want to do. And then you don't have to spend hours coding YAML to make it work the way you want it to. Now, obviously Home Assistant has done a lot of work to make uh, the, um, the automations easier to build from a UI perspective. However, you see in that code there that there is a ton of stuff that still has to be coded in YAML, especially for these blueprints. And you would take a lot of time to do that. And if someone's already invented the automation for you, just use the blueprint. That's the beauty. So let's go look over at my automation that I set up a while back. And I'll explain a little bit why I changed this. So we'll just pick this one right here. If you look at my code for my automation, it's very simple. All you have here is basically some alerting with a little bit of a cool down period and the ability to do some actionable things like click on the clip or click on the alert. But I don't have enough features in here to do what I want to do. So I'm going to use the regular blueprint that is now available from Sergeant Batten. And we can go actually look at that now over on the, let's find a blueprint one here. So here is one that I've created. And this is what it looks like when you actually create it. If you want to start from scratch, all you do is you create an automation over here. You click on create automation over here, and then you can create it from a blueprint. All the blueprints you have listed in your blueprint section up here will show up here as selections. I had an older version. This is the one that didn't work. Uh, so this is the one I want to start with. So you just click on that and it creates a, an empty automation or a create an empty yeah, automation template for you to fill out. And so you would choose the camera here. So I say I picked the driveway camera. The mobile device, I want to alert. And uh, it's my phone, the notification notification group. And I'm going to go through some of the key, key um, settings here. I'm not going to fill out all of these. I don't use notification groups. The base URL is what you need to put in where your frigate instance is. In my case, I'm just going to put in the IP address of the um, Home Assistant instance. And that is that right there. And this is where it's going to go and look at the API. Now you have, you need to have the, uh, the frigate proxy installed or frigate itself on home assistant. This is a requirement. Otherwise it's not going to work. This is a default topic that frigate has. Uh, I don't use client ID. There's a lot of notification customizations here. So notification message, you can put whatever you want here. You can also use, uh, some, of these uh, template variables or variables. So if I just take that and paste it in here. So this basically lets you set a custom thing based on specific variables that are that are sent with the, the, um, the alert. Uh, subtitles, you can put a subtitle here. This shows up in different ways on different versions of phones and mobile devices. So you may have to play around with which one is best for you. If you want this to bypass your do not disturb, turn this on. Or you can also turn it on during certain hours. There's some examples here. You can turn it on during certain days if the sun, or if the sun is above the horizon. Uh, if the score is greater than a certain number, you can have it bypass it. So I leave it to false because I don't need to be alerted when I'm sleeping or whenever I have my phone and do not disturb. Alert once, I always do that one because I only want one notification for each update. I don't want it to send multiple updates. You can choose the image to attach to the notifications, either a thumbnail, a snapshot, a snapshot with bounding box, crop snapshot, or snapshot crop with bounding box. I use this one because it gives me the full image, plus it, it, it uh, puts a bounding box around the thing that actually made the uh, alert go off. So you can see really quickly where the actual event or the actual object is that caused the event. And this is kind of cool for Android or Android TV on my phone. I can choose a color. So I just pick something that's different than all my other thousand notifications I get. You can change the icon. I leave the group as it is because it will group uh, the alerts based on the camera in this case by default. For iOS, you can change the default sound. I use channels on, on my Android phone and the channels allow me to set specific notification sounds based on the channel that it is sending. 
So farther down, you'll be able to see that I use a channel for that rather than the default sound here. Android Auto, I turn that on, and then what it does is it sends me a little image on my car screen. If I can get an alert, this is a channel I'm talking about, so this would be driveway cam. So if I get an alert here, it will send it over to my phone as driveway cam channel, and I have a very specific sound for that, so I know it's driveway versus some other camera being alerted. Then we have a whole ton of filters. Uh, you need to turn this on, first of all. Uh, required zones, so I want to turn on the front street. Now, this isn't a drop-down list. You have to specify this exactly the way your zones are set up. So if you only want alerts to be fired in this automation from the front street, then you need to specify that. Object filter, I want to filter on just person. I don't care about anything else in the front street, so I will select that. But you can select multiple things here if you want to. And then presence filter, if you want to pick a person, a device tracker, and you only want to be alerted if they're not home, then you can put it here. So this is useful if you were to have a um, uh, have alerts only when you're out away from your house uh, because you're home, you don't need to see all that stuff. That would be useful for that. State filter is interesting. This is another option for if you're away from home. So in this case, I would look for my alarm panel. So in this case, I want my state filter to be anytime it's armed away, armed home. In those two states, actually you need to do it this way, armed away and then armed home. I will only get alerts if this is checked and this entity is in one of these two states. You can, the sky's the limit on that. You can figure out all different ways that you can match uh, an entity to a state and only get camera alerts in certain states. If you only want to be alerted at night when the sun is below the horizon, you could do that. If you only want to be alerted during the day, you could set it up that way. There's a lot of different things you, you can do to change whether or not this thing alerts or not. You can also do time filters. So you can only be alerted, uh, let's say starting at 9 a.m. or let's say 6 a.m., 7 a.m., Etc. You can just add all these time filters as well. So you can be you can be very custom about how you want to be alerted and when you want to be alerted. There's a cool down period, which is a delay before sending another notification. So it's defaulted to 30 seconds. If you have someone walking around an area, you don't want to be boom, 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 just blown away by all the alerts. Set a cool down period. Uh, typically, I'll do anywhere from 60. And we won't do that. How about we do 60 to 90 seconds? So we'll just make this uh, 60 seconds. So I don't want another alert for that particular, from this particular alert for 60 seconds. You can silence new, uh, new uh, notifications. This is how long to silence things when the camera is uh, part of the actionable notification. So if down here farther, when you click on silence new notification as part of your actionable notification, uh, you can send set how long you want it to silence it. So if I push that button, silence alerts for this, particular camera, it won't do another alert for 30 minutes the way it's setting now. You can also have loitering notifications. So if I want to know if someone's in there for two minutes or an object's there for two minutes, then I will get an alert after two minutes saying, hey, that thing is still there. That's useful if you have a lot of passerby traffic and you only want to be notified if somebody stops for more than a certain amount of time in the zone that you're looking at. In that case, you would get another alert saying so-and-so is loitering or this object is loitering, loitering, that's a hard word, in this area. Uh, now, action buttons and URLs. You can set action buttons to do all kinds of stuff. View the clip, the snapshot, the stream. You can open Home Assistant in the web or the app, open Frigate, open Real Link app, open, and you can do a custom app action here. The most common are to view the clip, which is the recording of the actual alert. You can also view the snapshot and then you can silence new not notifications. Those are the three that I'm gonna use and those are the default. And so you can have three of those. There's custom actions. You can actually add an action and then you can use a custom action manual trigger to do something over here. So you would add the action based on anything else. So if, if you get an alert and it pops up on your phone, you could, I don't know, create a button to turn on a light or turn on the lights or something. And then you would, from that single alert, you could create this manual action. Oh, one other thing I want to tell you about is if you set a view clip here, it is possible for you to actually set the view clip option. But if you don't have a video associated with that, then it's not going to work for you. You'll get 
uh, a screen that looks just like this. Let me blow it up for you. You will see message clip not available. Success is false. The reason that is, in my case, is that I was sending alerts out for events and putting that view clip button on there, but I didn't actually have a video clip that tied to it. If you'll notice here, the URL for this is your IP address or whatever, your home assistant instance, the API for get notifications. This ID right here, that's the ID of the event and then your camera and then it's a clip.mp4. This doesn't exist for clips that you don't create a recording for. And I'll show you how that works here in Frigate. So if we go to camera settings and I just look at, let's say the driveway camera here, you can see that I have driveway right side as an alert and front street is unchecked. What that means is that I will get detections for all of the stuff going on on the camera, but I will not get alerts and the alerts are what generate the video clip. So if I don't check front street here and I have front street set as a zone for alerting in my, my blueprint, I will see the snapshot, but I will not have any video clips because the way this is set up here, there are no videos uh, to, for it to show. So you'll get this, this funny failure thing that I showed you just a minute ago. So make sure if you're going to create um, alerts and you want to be able to view the clip, you're going to have to have a corresponding alert set up here for that zone that you're creating the alert for. So just keep that in mind. All right, one other thing I want to show you here. Let's see where that is. If I look at a an alert trace, just for the fun of it, I'll just look at this right here. I just want to show you this because it is so amazing to see this. When you look at this, this is the actual path that this follows. If you've never seen a trace in, in a Home Assistant automations before, this is basically a troubleshooting thing. It allows you to look at all of the different um, steps that go along here and determine if something is going the way it's supposed to, or didn't go the way it was supposed to. And you just kind of go through all of these and follow along the path. This one actually didn't fire. It stopped here because something was not true here. Um, notification enabled for objects. So it wasn't, there was something in the zone, one of the zones on this camera that wasn't true. So this stopped right here, but you can go back and see traces where it goes all the way through, sends the alert. Here, it's, it's in a loop for loitering, so it just goes back up and checks here over and over again. Anyway, troubleshooting um, automations is a lot easier now that you have something like that to be able to do that with. So what do these alerts look like on the phone? Let me show you here what that looks like. So I've got a few alerts that have come in already. I've got an alert here on the driveway. And if I scroll down, you can see that there's three options, view clip, view snapshot, and silence new notifications. If I click on, click on view snapshot, it's actually going to show the snapshot and it'll give you kind of a, um, a cropped look of the person or thing or object or whatever there. So if you go back and we look at this one on the back porch, for example, we'll be able to view the clip of this one. And there I am giving a little wave to the camera. So that's all it is with those alerts. Uh, it gives you the actionable items on those as well. So I can come out of that and I can also um, silence these. So if I want to silence these now, if I click on that silence new alerts button. You don't see a lot of stuff happen there, but what you do see is, or what will happen is for that setting that we had earlier, where we had uh, this setting in here for silence optional. Now the silence new object notifications will run for 30 minutes. That means that no notification, no new, no new notific, no new notifications will show up for this particular automation for the next 30 minutes. So that's frigate notifications, a very detailed view of the blueprint that was created by Sergeant Batten right here. A lot of credit goes to the community members who make these particular automation blueprints so that we can use them without having to code everything out ourselves. All right, that's going to do it for today. It, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you're not a subscriber, do the thing down below. Uh, for those that support me through channel memberships or Ko-fi or Patreon, thank you so much. It helps me to continue to make these videos, uh, which I love to do for you. So thank you so much, and we'll see you on the next one.